What's going on, smart people? You may have seen an article floating around on various social media platforms. Personally, I've seen it on Facebook, titled, Scientists Find Evidence for Multidimensional Universe Inside Our Brain. And at first, I wasn't convinced that I needed to spend any time talking about this article because I thought to myself, who the hell would share this? Who the hell would believe this? Well, it was shared by over 210,000 people, so I think that constitutes a quick debunk. And the hilarious thing about this article is that it gives you the tools to call it on its own bullshit. Let me show you what I mean. So here's the article. Scientists find evidence of multidimensional universe inside our brain. Sounds convincing, I know. It's up to 214,000 shares now. Fantastic. What this whole thing comes down to is a group of neuroscientists published a paper, which is what this article is based on, that shows that there's a relationship between sort of the direction of information flow in the brain and the size of these interconnected neuron groups, so these groups of connected neurons. And this article just takes what they did way out of context. The paper itself is not BS from what I could gather. This just wanted your clicks, and let's, let's go into it a little bit. With the help of mathematical methods of algebraic topology, scientists have fond structures, excellent start there with the typo, and multidimensional geometric spaces and human brain networks. Algebraic topology is an actual field of math. It applies abstract algebra to another field that is topology. Topology is similar to geometry, but they're interested in somewhat different things. You may have heard the old joke, a topologist can't tell the difference between a coffee mug and a donut because they both have one hole. Excellent joke, moving on. According to scientists, new study has demonstrated that the human brain contains structures and shapes that may have up to 11 dimensions. That's basically common knowledge at this point, right? No need to cite that. Experts have previously stated how the human brain has such and such amount of neurons, including connections, and it, it's responsible for us having thought and consciousness. What I think is kind of funny is they make sure to cite that, that the brain is responsible for thought and consciousness. That deserves a citation. But there does not need to be a citation for there being 11 dimensions. That's basically common knowledge at this point. Anyways, so you continue down and it says something like, scientists managed to locate structures in the human brain that display a multidimensional universe, revealing the very first geometric design of neural connections and how they react to different stimuli. One motif of this article is how many times they use the word dimensions without defining what they mean by dimensions. And this is extremely important because to the general public, dimensions probably is mostly associated with spatial or time dimensions. You know, you have your, your in, out, left, right, up, down dimensions, and then you have time flowing. But in things like physics, we tend to use the word dimension sometimes synonymously with degrees of freedom, which basically comes down to what do I need to know about the system so that I can make predictions in the future? Or I know if I change these things independently, these degrees of freedom independently, what happens next? For example, if I want to know about the motion of the Earth, well, I need to know its position in the X, Y, and Z direction, and I also have to know the components of its momentum in the X, Y, and Z direction. So these are six quantities that I need to know in order to tell you where the Earth will be next. That's a six-dimensional problem to a physicist. Now, you can also take into account the fact that the Earth is made of billions and billions of atoms that have electrons that can be excited with different spins, and they all contribute their own degrees of freedom. That's complications that don't need to be made. They don't really contribute to the actual problem. But that, that's the important thing of defining your terms and saying exactly what you mean. Because this whole article, the straw that breaks the camel's back of this article is the fact that they didn't define dimensions. And everything crumbles because of that once you actually find out what these neuroscientists were defining dimensions to mean. It's not as significant. It does not merit a title like this, multidimensional universe, but we're going to get to that. Henry Markram, a neuroscientist and director, said in an interview, we found a world that we have never imagined before. We have uncovered tens of millions of these objects, even with a small speck of the brain, up through seven dimensions. Here's the word again. However, in some networks, we even discovered structures with up to 11 dimensions. But the thing is, is this is the actual neuroscientist. This is a person who's using their terminology dimensions in the way that they're intending it to be used. This article is purposefully misleading you into thinking the dimensions might, you know, you're 11 dimensions, that must be string theory, right? Scroll down, it keeps, it keeps talking, it keeps having these grand uh, analogies and, and things like that. It's, it's as if the brain responds to an inducement by constructing then smashing tower of multidimensional blocks, starting with one-dimensional rods, two-dimensional planks, three-dimensional cubes, and more complex geometries with 4, 5D, etc. 
However, mathematicians are used to define them, it may contain such as five, six, seven, or up to 11 dimensions again. Just have to throw in the 11 dimensions. Here's the, here's the great thing with this article. Sources I used to write this article. Multi-dimensional universe hiding in your brain. You click on this article. Okay, it'll take us to this one. And then we can actually get to the paper itself from one of the links here, new study. This is what we're interested in. Because in this, we finally get the chance to find out what the hell they mean by dimension. So, clicks of neurons bound in cavities provide missing link between structure and function. Very different title, by the way. So in the beginning of this video, I mentioned how you can, you can consider these groups of neurons that are connected and, and classify them. When you have these things that are all connected in terms of like nodes, you can call that a network. And that's what this is interested in, is, is creating a mathematical framework around this. Here it says, networks are often analyzed in terms of groups of nodes that are all to all connected known as clicks. The number of neurons in a click determines its size, or more formally, its dimension. So dimension in this context has nothing to do with spatial dimensions or multiple universes. It's talking about neurons in a click. So neurons connected in this network. That's all it is. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to marginalize the research that was done here. I'm sure, I'm sure it was great. But I'm just saying it has nothing to do with a multidimensional universe. And you were two clicks away, no pun intended, from finding this out for yourself. So we go back to the article. That's why I said like they gave you the tools to call bullshit on their own article. Uh, which I think is pretty funny. So if you know someone who may have shared this article on Facebook or someone who's, who's that kind of person that says, wow, good read when they see this kind of thing, maybe, maybe share this video to them to show, you know, sometimes the real answer isn't that far away. If you just put in a little bit of effort, I know a lot of people might not even end up clicking on the article. They just read scientists say and say, well, I'm not going to argue with a scientist. What do I know? But the thing with these kinds of articles is these aren't the ones written by the scientist. Sure, maybe put a little stock into what the scientists tell you, but this is some journalist who makes money off of you clicking on their article and interacting with the ads that are placed. So they want as clickbaity a title as they can get to get you to click on ads once you're in the article. That's all they want. That's all that's important, right? So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Hope I shed some light on how to figure out for yourself whether or not an article is, is just trying to trying to pull one over on you. So let me know in the comments section if you want me to do more of these debunk videos when it comes to science because this, this clickbait stuff, it has no place in science. I don't want to see that. I would be up for, for tearing these articles apart any chance I get. Let me know in the comments section if that's something you'd like to see and I'll see you guys there.